Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Oh, and it's such a happy day. We got some good stuff here. <laughs> we have we have asteroids and all sorts of stuff going on up in the skies over our health, our health, our health, <laughs> our health. We're praying for our health. Yes, we are. We are that too. And our heads. Uh, uh, yeah. So here we see asteroid 2020 S O S O may get captured by Earth from October 2020 to May 2021. Current nominal trajectory shows capture through L2 and escape through L1. Highly chaotic path, so be prepared for lots of revisions. Wow. You know, it, it, it's, it, we just have so many of these things coming by. Be, be prepared for lots of revisions. That's a curious statement. It is. And we have two asteroids set to cross Earth's orbit just hours apart, while another great pyramid-sized space rock barrels our way as well. So two of them are 100-meter-wide asteroids. They're significant. You know, that would be significant. It's not like a 12-foot a, a one that's going to burn up. Um, and they're going to cross within hours of each other on Friday the 25th. Meanwhile, another space rock the size of the Great Pyramid will also be passing. S you know, we've gotten the warnings. Yeah. And, you know, we've definitely seen that there is an it, obvious increase in activity. There is. There really is an increase in activity, and it's just super curious, the timing of everything right now. So 2020 RO is going to be uh, passing by on the 25th, and that's 130 meters wide, they say. The other one, 2020 SM, and remember we just were talking about a different one, 2020 SO, uh, is expected to sail past the Earth later that day, and that one's about 100 meters so they are forecast to safely sail, sail past our planet despite coming into contact with its orbit. They were both discovered this year. And on September 29th, a 200 meter wide space rock will silently pass the Earth at a distance of about 1.78 million miles. So that's, you know, pretty far away, you know, because like a lunar distance is roughly like 239,000 and change miles so it's it's well past the lunar distance um you know so that one should not be an issue at all but you know lots of activity a lot of interesting activity for sure remember that asteroid that somehow slipped past the earth's main planetary defenses what's wrong with yeah. space force i know what's going on with that get your butts up there and do yes. something yes fix it <laughs> <laughs> and they found a large meteorite chunk in brazil too so, yeah, what's going on? And then we see this. Space debris forces astronauts aboard the ISS to take shelter. Ah. The astronauts aboard the International Space Station were taking shelter inside the Soyuz spacecraft due to an unknown piece of space debris that was going to pass within several miles of the station. So they relocated out of an abundance of caution, and it passed by, thankfully, they say, no problems. And uh, as you see here, the Progress Resupply Ship Maneuver was successful in moving the ISS away from the unknown debris. That's very curious. Which sci-fi movie was it where it looked like it was it um, Battle of Los Angeles, Battle of L.A. or something? There was one of those alien invasion flicks where it's it's like asteroids coming in. And then all of a sudden, later, the ships come up. Yeah. I know somebody's going to remember that yeah. one. Well, I remember the Hopi prophecy that says this is the ninth and last sign. Uh, as far as when we know it's go time. You will hear of a dwelling place in the heavens above the earth that shall fall with a great crash. It will appear as a blue star. Very soon after this, the ceremonies of my people will cease. And uh, it also talks about, so many people do translate that. They're, they're waiting for the ISS to come down because yeah. the ISS is a dwelling place in the heavens, right? And so, you know, it could be something different, but many people believe that is what it is. And the Hopi prophecy also states that World War III will be started by the peoples who received, who first received the light, China, Palestine, India, and Africa. And when the war comes, the United States will be destroyed by gourds of ashes, which will fall on the ground, boiling the rivers and burning the earth, where no grass will grow for many years, and causing a disease that no medicine can cure. 
So many people interpret that as, you know, obviously atomic bombs, nuclear bombs. We see Space Force deploys its first squadron outside of the U.S. And Space Force, by the way, has a $15 billion budget for, for the upcoming year, as you see the cadets going. And uh, they are not heading up so much as heading uh, out. And so... Space Force is just interesting because we know there's a secret space program. So it, it's just a little bit of, you know, disclosure. It, but also, I mean, the militarization of space in which maybe World War Three, if it does come to pass, is, is also fought up there. And this mysterious Object A left in orbit by China's space plane baffles astronomers. China's new space plane returned to the Earth on September 6th, but it left something behind in orbit, an item of unknown character called Object A by the U.S. military. So last night in the Netherlands, Marco Langbroek tracked it across the sky using a hand-pointed video camera. It showed slow but marked brightness changes between magnitude of plus 4 and invisible, fainter than plus 7. So the light curve shows two brightness peaks and two major fading episodes. So in other words, they think it might be tumbling. What is it? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Is this part of some, you know, preemptive strike that is to come? Is it some part of some new technology? Is it going to be, you know, a piece of the EMP plan? Who knows? But without a doubt... If you look at what's going on between the U.S., China, Russia, and others, ominous. I know. It's those things that make you go, hmm. And there'll always be those people that say, fear mongering again. Well, you know, if it saves lives because people prepare and people have food and people, you know, just try to do what they can to prepare for what may be coming, which we know is in the plans because it's been, you know, out there that it's been in the plan since 1871. It, it really has. So it's just important to always be prepared. And, you know, this was curious. So um, this is just, it's a video that shows a whole bunch of cars just going about doing their business. And let me get rid of this annoying overlay. Uh, and then all of a sudden, whoosh, this tidal wave comes in. And it's brought in by a tidal bore, and it crashed onto a road next to the Kiang River. And the whoosh, look at that. Believe it or not, nobody was killed. But man, that looks scary. Can you imagine? Well, I don't know. Did the earth take a little a little hit with something? How did this happen? You know, times are strange, and there is a lot of weather activity for sure. And, you know, one thing to take away from everything that we're seeing, including the lockdown, all the chaos is soaring wealth among the ultra-rich. They are getting richer and richer and richer while the vast majority of people are getting poorer and poorer and poorer. This whole lockdown has destroyed mom and pop's businesses. It's, it's destroyed so many restaurants and so many just small shops, great little unique places. And at the same time, the big giants like Amazon, you know, Amazon has benefited probably more than anybody in this. And it's just a consolidation of wealth, again, into the hands of the very, very few. And, you know, it, that whole thing needs to change. It really needs to change. In, in some ways, it's getting blatantly obvious, you know, what's going on here. I think a lot of people are waking up. And, you know, this is what it's done. And it's destroying, destroying the, the whole global system. And as you see, you know, the, the rich is 1%, own 31% of the nation's wealth. That's that's pretty big. So, you know, you can look at it as you got 99% of the, of, of the rest of us that together own almost two-thirds. And then when we get down to the ultra-rich, too, I mean, the the power and influence they're able to wield to get things done, to bend to their will. Yeah, and you know where our power lies is with ourselves. It lies with our health. It lies in our ingenuity. And um, necessity is the mother of all inventions. And I know that we can get through this and we'll be better off for it. 
So guys, we want to thank you for your support on Patreon and also on Ko-Fi because we couldn't do it without you. Um, as we have been had the primary channel, the evolutionary demonetized uh, all year, and you know that was simply for pointing out some uh, laws that went into effect that anybody could go and look at. That's all we did. We pointed out laws that were put in effect that they didn't want you to know were put into effect. And so, you know, we have to keep contri keep trying to get the truth out and to wake people up to what's going on and at the same time don't allow themselves to be manipulated and pulled into, uh, you know, basically events that are being orchestrated in order to just pit us against each other. Yeah, it's a fine line. And, you know, I know that we can get through this together. As always, guys, stay prepared. God bless and namaste. Namaste.